Houston, we have go for main engine start. Begin final countdown. Roger that. Beginning countdown. T minus five, four, three, two, one, and lift off. Ditching Suburbia is on a mission to help families leave traditional suburban lives in search of simpler living, closer family, richer education, and uncommon adventures. Find us on the web at ditchingsuburbia.com. Hi, this is Chris Boink of Ditching Suburbia. Today I'm going to share with you a complete guide to homeschooling and road schooling K-12. Why did we start homeschooling? When our children were born, we didn't immediately think about their schooling. I mean, that's years from now, right? We just read a lot of books and played. Friends of ours had boys a few years older than our children and were homeschooling. When my kids were barely out of diapers, I went to one of their homeschool meetings. The moms there talked about their successes and struggles. They organized field trips. They prayed for each other. I enjoyed it, so kept attending. When Harrison turned five, we thought, how hard can it be to homeschool kindergarten? He was already reading and could do some basic math. He and Miranda loved reenacting what we read about or what we experienced on our field trips. And I had the support of the other homeschooling moms to draw on if I felt challenged. So we kept them home for kindergarten. At the end of the year, we asked ourselves, should we keep doing this? Yep, we kept asking that question each year and the answer each year was yes. What curriculum do you use? This question comes up a lot. Elementary school years. During the elementary school years, I had an eclectic approach. I dabbled in several formal programs and we read a lot of library books. My children had different strengths when it came to math and writing, so I tailored subjects to suit each kid. We added daddy time in the garage, on the snow hills, or on the bike paths. We also found local programs to tap into like gym class for homeschoolers at the local college, or a 4-H program where Miranda worked with miniature horses. But basically, we learned together, and read together, went on field trips together, and played together. Middle school years. When the kids entered the middle school years, we got more structured in our schooling. In addition to teaching the kids at home, I hired a tutor to encourage our reluctant writer and a prolific writer. I also enrolled my children in Friday Edition, a one-day-a-week program where the kids attended classes on those additional topics I may not cover at home, like art or music, drama, Spanish, gym. The school year before we began traveling was our most structured year. I felt like I finally had the hang of this homeschooling thing. And then, we cooked up the crazy plan to take a year traveling the country. Our one-year road trip. The summer before we left on our one-year adventure was crazy busy with preparations. We had to shop for, buy, and prep a new truck and a new used RV. We had to find someone to live in our house and get that arranged. We had to change insurance. The week before we left, I freaked. I didn't have anything finalized for the upcoming school year. Mike looked me in the eyes and calmly told me to let it go. I don't want to be sitting outside of Yosemite and having to wait for the kids to finish up their workbook pages, Mike said to me. <laughs> so we left with multiple stacks of books, paper, and pencils, pens, and markers. No textbooks, no schedules, no plan. For the first few weeks, we were all getting used to traveling and living in this small space. About a month into the trip, I became unsettled again. Without a schedule or textbooks, I felt my kids were not learning anything. I felt we needed to get more structured. I put together a plan. It lasted a week. I was frustrated. At this point, Harrison put things into perspective for me. He reminded me that he and Miranda were learning. He said history lessons came from our visit to Erie, Pennsylvania, where we learned about the War of 1812, and Gettysburg, where we talked about and learned more about the Civil War, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where we learned about the Founding Fathers, the Declaration of Independence, and our Constitution. He told me that science lessons came from our stop in Richmond, Virginia, 
where we learned about sundials, and Virginia Beach, where we learned about ocean life, and Upper Black Eddy, Pennsylvania, where we learned about rocks that ring like bells. And geography? They were learning that every time we moved the RV. Harrison was right. I let it go for the next several months. We visited national parks where Miranda was still young enough to do the junior ranger programs. We visited state and county parks where we learned about the desert, the ocean, and forests. We visited large cities and experienced public transportation, unique foods, and homelessness. The kids participated in National Novel Writing Month and journaled to keep their writing skills progressing. And somewhere in Arizona, I added formal math. We learned from our travels. Pit stop in suburbia. After our year of traveling, we returned to our house for six months to prepare it for sale. Switching gears for homeschooling was difficult. I ordered some science, history, and math curriculums, even while we were purging a basement full of old curriculum. Harrison joined a local homeschooler's journalism class and started a sports column for the class newspaper. But overall, we muddled through without enthusiasm or structure. Return to the road. The house sold and we went back to the road full time. Our homeschooling morphed again. It became a combination of formal curriculum and experiences as we traveled. Miranda dug into her love for the Sonoran Desert. Harrison joined another traveling teen and created Lego stop motion movies. Both kids took on new physical challenges like mountain biking, hiking, surfing, snorkeling, BMX racing. They both took online classes, meeting kids from all over the world, and remaining friends with some of them. They watched and listened as the House of Representatives discussed and took votes on a bill. Harrison had his first real job, and Miranda worked with horses and dogs. They hung out with kids and adults of all ages. They continued to learn. Where are we now? Another four years have gone by since we sold the house. We're in the final phases of our homeschooling journey. Last January, we graduated Harrison on his 18th birthday. His final year with me was more formal as he wanted to make sure he was prepared to attend college after a gap year if he chose to. The summer after he graduated, he worked part-time at Subway, improving his life skills, cooking, laundry, cleaning, and spending time working on his music. The following fall, he moved out on his own. Miranda told me that she'd like to graduate on her 18th birthday too, but it's not clear if that will happen or not, and that's okay. Right now, she's finishing up a formal math program, completing a human anatomy course, learning Dutch, teaching herself guitar, writing a novel, knitting hats, purses, washcloths, and stuffed animals. She's found ways to learn more about animals. She did an internship at a humane society. She took care of animals at an animal rescue ranch, and she'll soon have her first paid summer job. Her final year of homeschooling looks different than Harrison's did, but the beauty of homeschooling is that it can be tailored to each child. If I could do it over, <laughs> holy cow, I didn't realize until preparing for this podcast how many different curriculums we tried. Why did I change them so often? I'm surprised my poor kids could keep up. I was probably too busy watching what other homeschooling families used or searching for the perfect solution or just trying to not screw up my kids. If I could do it all over again, I would be less structured and less worried about curriculum. I would follow my kids' lead and do more project-based learning. I would let learning be more organic, like it was our first year of traveling. And we'd hit the road sooner. You know, for the children. I've talked about a ton of different things in this podcast. If you want to know more about homeschooling, visit the resources section on ditchingsuburbia.com. You've been listening to the Ditching Suburbia podcast. Ditching Suburbia helps common families create uncommon lives. Learn more at ditchingsuburbia.com.